Right. Okay. So we're live streaming. So welcome. Uh, okay. I'm okay, back to host. Let me. Yep. Yeah, I'll make you co-host. Co oh, whoopsie. I've made you host. Nope. I want to make you co-host. <laughs> right. Um, so we are already streaming, right? Yep. Already. Yeah. Okay. Right. Already streaming. Well, today's uh, class, Harry, I think could be quite an interesting one. It's all about things you find in different countries and the people have to oh. guess which country they come from. So wow. I hope you've got a pen and paper as well and see how many things yeah. you can guess. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> and and see. Try. See, yeah, they're all they're modern and old, and there's all sorts of stuff. And I'm pretty sure there'll be quite a few you'll be able to get. You'll probably get a lot of them. Um, okay. I've obviously got a few curveballs in there because you don't want everybody to get everything. Um, yep, unless, right. so, yeah, otherwise, if they've got some very clever people, it gets very boring for them. So you've got to have yes. uh, a multitude of, of right. questions and things to, to put into it. So, right, right. yeah, that, that is where we're going to go from. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see um, what people see and what people do um, with these different questions that I've come up with for this one. Next week is the 70s, and mm -hmm. the following week is a general knowledge and okay. the week after that, um, I think it's a travel one. Where if oh. I if I am if I'm doing this, where am I? Or if I am, so that's that's another one to come. So okay. there are a large variety. I want to actually have altogether eight different quizzes, and then go back to the beginning again. So um, slowly but surely, we're getting up to that. We are now Sounds on good. quiz three. <laughs> So, so we're getting to it. We're due to have about eight people in class today. So let's hope they come uh, to make it an interesting class. Sure. Ah. Otherwise, it's you and me. And we'll see how many you problem. can get. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody else who's watching from their armchair instead of taking part. Uh, yeah. So we will find out from that whether people are there or not not afterwards yep all right so two one two minutes to go i'm just making some warm water in case my voice decides to go funny which it has been doing <laughs> so sure. let me just take this kettle and i have my own kettle in my office now for winter because otherwise i've got to go to the other end of the house to get warm water so yeah, it's much but, easier to have a kettle here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to have a flask, but the flask gets cold so quickly that okay. <laughs> it didn't really help. Within two hours, my flask was cold. Um, oh. And uh, I work late into the night uh, and Michael goes to bed a lot earlier. And then I can't really go up to the kitchen and make a, make a noise and wake him up. So uh, yeah. I would just have to put up with my colds. I thought, no, 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 definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> Okay. Does uh, it snow where you live? Not even vaguely. I think okay. in my entire <laughs> life I've seen snow when I went to Europe when I was 16 and maybe okay. twice other than that. <laughs> so no, okay. no, it doesn't. Um, it, it does in uh, parts of the east up in the mountains, they get okay. snow. But on the mm -hmm. West Coast, no. I don't think they've ever seen okay. snow. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Um, my son's been okay. here 11 years and they've never seen snow. So it's yeah. unlikely. <laughs> okay. No, no. And what, one of the things I really want to do is to have a time when I am uh, in a nice warm, uh, like wooden, cot uh, wooden cabin cut, with the yeah. snow outside. That would be mm. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and Michael also wants to do that, so that's one of the things on our bucket list uh, is to do that. You guys should um, come to India then, to my state where I live. It's snowy here, and you can find a very cheap cabin here as well. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that yeah. it snowed in. I thought India was too hot for snow. No, no, northern part is full of snow. Like we have Himalayas here, so northern okay. part. Oh, we have of snow course, in... yes. Oh, yeah, yes. that makes sense. Yes. So, um, when do you get snow? Oh, here's Carol Sue. That's great. When do you yeah. get snow? In July? Uh, in, 
No, in we get it in November, December, January, Feb. Of course, you are your Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah, your Northern yep. Hemisphere. So you would get it then. Hi, Carol Sue. Lovely to have you in class. How are you tonight? I'm very well, thank you. It's it's, morning for you, though. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock in the morning for me, and I am fine, thank you. And I'm delighted to have you in class. Have you got your thinking cap on today? Uh, I'm very bad at geography. Well, this isn't actually geography, so this is fine. This is food and maybe musical oh, okay. instruments. It's all sorts of things. So I, I think it'll it'll be able to. Uh, no, there's very little geography in in um, sort of places as such. It's more okay. uh, other things that. Uh, so oh, one they will quick give question: you. How's your bandicoot? Well, we've now got three. You have three. <laughs> Yeah, you know we've what got like children go to yeah. their house they have good snacks yeah well we've got three and the one is carrying a baby in its pouch at the moment whenever she's walking her belly is actually rubbing on the floor uh, so <laughs> she's definitely got a baby in in her pouch um oh, and we've wow. got one big one that comes in and tries to chase the other ones away and then we put the dogs out and it, it gets chased and then the little ones <laughs> come back <laughs> so yeah, if, if you're not prepared to share then you have to leave so yes. <laughs> yeah but all together pictures Yes, we 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 are. Michael's okay. taking pictures because he his desk is right there, so he can look out the window and see them all the time. I'm no. at the other end of the house, so he's got to call Bandicoot, and then the dogs have picked up on that, and they come scuttling out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it, it's very funny, but yes, uh, no, we've now got three of them that are are around and about with us. Yes, I w- um, expect to take in more because you have you guys have good food. We do. We have very nice food. Hi, Wendy. Lovely to have you in class today and see how you're doing. Nice to see you. <laughs> Lovely. All world. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Good, good. Uh, that's excellent. We'll give it another maybe minute or so, and then we will start. Here comes Karen. Excellent. Uh, regulars who <laughs> like the quiz. That's excellent. Uh, hi, Karen. Lovely to have hi, you Sue. in class. Nice to have you in class today. Thank you. Yeah, I've been, been busy because I'm a night hour, so I have to pick up my husband from work. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, lovely to see you again. Thank it's you. excellent. All right, we've got Harry with us today. He's watching to make sure that none of the bombers get in um, and that only the regulars get in. And so we should be able to have an awesome class today. Today's class is, uh, today's quiz is all about different things that you find in different countries. And you've got to tell me which country these things come from. So uh, I'm going to start sharing now, and when the others come in, they can join us from that particular point. Right, so uh, just got to bring this down. Oops, you know, I don't want that there. I need to be able to bring this down so I can start my PowerPoint. There we go, and up it goes. Do you want us to raise hand or just chime in? uh, No, what what I would like you to do is to each get a piece of paper. And what we do is we do three questions at a time. And then we answer those three. uh, And then some pages, it's four. And then we answer those. And at the end of every 10 questions, we find out how everybody has done. So let's have a look. Oh, Melinda's in the waiting room too. That's awesome. She'll be coming in now as well. So we will have a whole lot of people in class today. So if you've got your piece of paper ready. Hi, Marjorie. Lovely to have you in class. Excellent. Marjorie, where are you from? Uh, just press your space bar and then you'll unmute. If you keep your hand on your space bar, then you'll be able to talk. Uh, uh, Harry will help you if you're stuck. Uh, no, we still can't get you to talk. Harry, can you just help Marjorie in the chat box? Yeah, sure. 
Sure. Okay, thanks. Oh, that'll be excellent. Hi, Melinda. Mm -hmm. Lovely to have okay, you in class. Oh, you got it. Excellent. I've <laughs> got a granddaughter to help you. <laughs> okay, thank you. So marvelous. Bombard Baders. Yes. Lovely. So you're but, you're in Wind But I am in Flo I'm in Florida right now. I you're in Florida. Okay, right. And here comes Carolyn. Carolyn's about to join us as well. Excellent. So if you've got your piece of paper, what we do is we do three and sometimes four questions, then we do the answer to those questions. And then we at the end of 10, we see how we've done on that section of, of the quiz. So let's start sharing. Lovely to have you in, Carolyn. Let's begin. Uh, where am I? Okay, right. Now, as you all know, we love to have our cameras on and see what we're doing. Uh, those joining by live streaming, well, you can do it from your comfort of your chair, but you can't take part and you can't give us the answers. So let's begin. I come from Perth, Australia. Um, I actually have moved here three years ago from South Africa. Um, I lived there for 63 years. Um, I've been ed an educator for 44 years, but now I get set up, I share, and I have fun with my peers. I enjoy creating and making things, including puzzles, and have a great love of animals. That's why all my animal series that some of you come into the different animal series. Karen, there's an, a new one called Birds in My Garden. Um, and one okay. called uh, Encounters with Wild Animals. So there are okay. two new ones that are there. Thank you, Sue. All right. So today we're going to test our general knowledge on traditional clothing, famous landmarks, traditional food, traditional music, so uh, and traditional singers. So hmm, let's find out. Number one, if I wear a kilt, where do I come from? Write down your answer. If I wear a kilt, where do I come from? Number two. If I wear a sari, where do I come from? And number three. If I wear a, an akupra hat, where do I come from? Right, let's have a look and see who can tell me where do uh, does a kilt come oh come from? Who can tell me? Uh, I I would say Scotland. Scotland, yeah. Scotland. Scotland, yeah, Scotland. You can all shout out your answers. That's great. Yes, actually, the English banned the kilt for 35 years and tried to get rid of it. And it is now a symbol of rebellion and the Scottish identity. Uh, so it backfired on the English really badly in trying to ban it. I've seen uh, um, pictures um, how men get into a traditional kilt. It's one long piece of material. That's they right. lie on the ground and they kind of uh, roll, <laughs> roll it around their body. And then when it's right, then they stand up and adjust it. But that's, I, you know, that's, that's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I used to wear a kilt when I was younger because my mom came from Scotland and it weighed a ton. The, that oh, kilt, wow. the, the traditional fabric is heavy. And as it's wrapped around, so it really does weigh a lot. Uh, I didn't like wearing my kilt. It and there's heavy. a big pin. Is it held by a big pin? I think at the, at the bottom there's a big bottom, pin okay. to hold the to hold the flap closed because okay. of course there's the tradition that what is under a man's kilt people want to know what he wears wow. under his kilt and so that that pin helps to keep the mystery going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, if I wear a sari, where do I come from? India. 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 India, yes. India. Sorry. Yes. And nowadays it's a symbol of independence. It started in the Indus Valley. So the, the information I have tells me. But if I'm wrong, if there's anybody Indian with us, they will be able to tell me if I'm incorrect. Harry, am I correct? Yep, you are very correct. Okay. Right. Now, who can tell me where does an Akubra hat come from? 
I'm going to guess. I have no idea. I'll just say Morocco. No, a lot, a lot further over. Hmm. People who live in my country would know it immediately. Africa? Australia? Australia, Australia. yes. Australia. And oh. a Cobra. And a Cobra hat. It's oh. actually a brand oh. of hat. Yeah. It's a company that's made these hats since 1874. And so now the hat has traditionally been called the Akubra hat um, and so you have this Akubra hat so it comes from Australia I've right. seen it but I never knew the name me, I like yeah. those hats I want one <laughs> <laughs> they're actually very nice hats I must say um, the traditional ones are actually made of rabbit fur but oh. uh, yeah so let's have a look now, if I wear, see, this has moved, a kimono, where do I come from? A kimono. And, whoops, where am I? If I wear wooden clogs, where do I come from? Number six. If I wear a 10-gallon hat, where do I come from? Hmm. Right. Let's have a look. If you wear a kimono, where do you come from? It's Japan. Japan. Yes, definitely Japan. That long, beautiful dress with the big sleeves uh, dates back to uh, 645. So a long, long time ago the kimono comes from and if i wear wooden clogs where do i come from denmark no holland holland yeah holland yes holland now known as the netherlands and it's been around since the medieval times at the beginning it was just wood at the bottom with leather over the top and then it became totally wooden oh i keep forgetting to put up my pictures that was very naughty of me. There's our beautiful kimono. And here are our wooden clogs. And then your 10-gallon hat. Where does that come from? Texas. From Texas, yes. And do, uh, why is it called the 10-gallon hat? Who can tell me? Anybody know? Is it a whole 10 gallons of something? <laughs> no, actually, it comes from the French, uh, from the Spanish word gallon, which means braid. And it's the braid that goes round the hat. And so there, it's, that's where gallon comes from. It, it's, 10, it's 10 gallon. Why 10? I'm not sure whether they've used 10 pieces of um, uh, cotton to make the braid. It's the way the braid is made. Um, but that's where it comes from. It's, it's not the size of the water or liquid that it could hold. I also thought it was the water that it held. <laughs> right. No, 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 the whiskey. <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> right. The whiskey, even better. <laughs> if I wore a lay or uh, around my neck or a grass skirt, where do I come from? There are actually two places that you could, that it, it's traditional to. Number Eight. If I wear a chipa, if I wear a chipa, very very traditional outfit from a particular country, a chipa. And if I wear animal skins for formal ceremonies, where do I come from? And the last one, if I wear a kokushnik, kokushnik, where do I come from? Number seven, if I wear a lei, where do I come from? Hawaii. Hawaii or from oh. Fiji. Yeah, a lei means to string 
uh, objects together to be worn. That's the, the actual meaning of the word lay. And if I wear a chipao? You know, I think it's China. It's a it long is. dress. It's really that really... beautiful uh, collared dress. It's very yes. tight fitting. Very tight fit. Yeah. Really beautiful outfit that they wear. Oh, a yeah. There's yes. another name for it too. Yeah, that is the chipao. Yeah. So um, you that, can that, buy that, those in San Francisco Chinatown. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're very I'm popular. Ordered, <laughs> and if you wear an animal skin, ooh, an African country for sure. Zulu, I <laughs> yes, Zulu, quite right, Zulu. So where do the Zulus come from? Africa. Which part? Um, east. Oh, I don't know. West? I'm sorry. Well, uh, actually, South Africa. Oh, really? South Africa. Yeah, South Africa. That is the traditional dress of the Zulu. The king will wear a leopard skin. He's the only one allowed to wear leopard skin. The others can wear other skin. But he, as the king, is allowed to wear leopard skin as his, his skin. Um, and that is their traditional dress that they wear. With their, The skirts are also made out of uh, animal skins. And the last one, if I wear a kokushnik, where do I come from? Well, that has to be Russia. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like Russia. Russia, yes. It is the traditional headdress of Russia. Right. So, how did we do, ladies? How did we do? <laughs> I got seven. I well got done, nine. Carol Sue. Wow, I'm Wendy, nine. the reigning brain again. She was brain for the uh, movies as well. Fantastic. Karen? Five. I have five. Five, five. And five for Marjorie. Great. And Carolyn? <laughs> How many did you get? Are you going to tell us or do you want to keep it a secret? Wait a minute, I gotta count them. Okay. <laughs> six, six. Six. Excellent. So everybody got some. Did you learn something in the section? Yep. Yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So it's not only fun, it's also informative. Right. Let's continue to the next section. The next section that we're going to be doing is different statues. So, who can, or famous landmarks, I would rather say, than statues. This country has the Statue of Liberty. And I think I'll shoot the lot of you if you don't get it. <laughs> You'll be deported. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. And now the we have the Great Wall. We have the Great Wall. Number 13, we have the Taj Mahal. Yeah. All right. Now, who has the Statue of Liberty? Is it New York? United, United, States. United States. United States, New York, yes. And where did it come from? France. 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 Yes, France gave it to them yeah. as a gift of friendship. Quite right. And where is the Great Wall? In China. 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 Beijing. Yeah, well, it goes from Beijing. It's actually uh, the, an incredibly long wall. It uh -huh. goes, it's two, it's for you, it's the uh, one, uh, hundred and, uh, 13,170 miles long. It's longer than from Cape to Cairo in Africa. So the wall is actually longer than the continent of Africa. Wow. It, is a, a, it is an incredibly long wall. And it was built from 770 BC until 476 BC. So it was built over a very long time. It wasn't built in a, in a hurry at all. Older than that. Over 300 years it took to build. So that is quite something to build a wall like that. Marjorie, you're on silent. 
Uh, and then the Taj Mahal. India. 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 India, yes. And what was why was it built? Any idea? Oh, oh the yes. Stood it for his wife or something? Yes. Yep. Yep, the, the emperor or the leader of the country, he built it for his wife who died in childbirth. Um, and I was reading up about the Taj Mahal. It has so many rooms inside, but nobody goes inside. It's quite the strangest thing. It's all blocked up. But inside there are apparently more than 200 rooms in that Taj Mahal. So it's quite mm -hmm. an amazing building, but nobody goes in. You only look at it from the outside. I want to do some more study on that because for me, it's really, really interesting. Right. Now, we have the Eiffel Tower. Wow. Nice, easy one. Oh, uh, somehow there's a picture there. It shouldn't be there. Sorry. Oh. I'll have to fix that later. <laughs> we have the most famous clock tower. Oh. And lastly, we have the Garuda Vishnu uh, Kenkana statue. I was actually there when they opened it. It was quite oh, amazing. Yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, who has the Eiffel Tower? France. France, France has it, absolutely. Yeah. And who has the clock tower? England. England. Mm. England. Now, the the um, the Eiffel Tower was in fact built for the World Trade Fair in 1889, and was supposed to only be up for the length of the time of the trade fair. But people oh. loved this, it so much that they decided to leave it up, and it became an icon of Paris. Um, but it was actually only built to stay up for a very short time. Uh, but fortunately, they left it. Now, uh, the Big Ben is in fact the, just one of the, uh, it's the great bell of the Tower of the Palace of Westminster, uh, which of course is now no longer a palace. It is now the government buildings. But in the beginning, it was a palace and it was just the clock tower in the corner of the, the palace, in the biggest um, tower of the palace. And who has the Garuda Vishnu Kenana statue? Who's no idea. Uh -huh. I was going to say India, but we already had India in the yeah. time. Because oh. Vishnu is a, a Hindu god. So I was yes, trying to think is. what other country would be um, worshipping. Um, Pakistan? No, it couldn't be Pakistan. No, it's a tiny England. little island, island and it's oh. got the tallest. This is the tallest statue in the world at the moment. Island. And it is Bali. Oh, Bali. Bali has Bali has the statue. We were there when they actually opened it. It took 25 years to build and it was built with private money. It wasn't funded by the government. Private uh, people built the statue and the wings, it's over 400 feet high. Uh, it's more than 100 feet uh, taller than the uh, Statue of Liberty. And mm. the wingspan on this bird is uh, 64 mm. meters uh, or, or 210 feet. And because the wingspan was so big, the wings had to be sent to Canada to be tested in wind tunnels in Canada because that was the only place that had big enough wind tunnels because they don't want the bird to take off if we, oh. they have a really bad wind. So they had to get everything checked out very carefully before they were able to put everything up. So this is, and on, on this beautiful bird, on the Garuda bird is sitting Vishnu and the, the helmet of Vishnu is made of gold. But it's so high up, and I don't think anybody would ever be able to get it off. Um, but it is really an incredible statue that has been built there. Uh, that picture I actually took, that was, that's a picture of my own, uh, of the, the statue. Right. Now, when did it open? Uh, 2018. Oh, okay. 
2018 is when it is. Yeah, very, very new. Mm. And, and it you stands. It? Sorry? You can so go to can the base go of it. it. No, you go to the base of it. You go, okay. go to the base of it. And then, um, but it's really, really beautiful. I think they, it will be, they're still working actually on it. There's still a lot going on. There could be a way to get in. But um, when we were there, no, you could only go to the base of the, of the statue. But a really magnificent statue. Wow. Okay, we have the Plaza del Toros Las Ventas. Where is that and what is it? Oh, mm. I, mm. I'm going to take a guess. Could this be Spain and it's a bullfighting ring? It is Spain and it is the bullfighting ring. Right. We'll is it in Madrid it. or? Yes, Madrid. Uh, well, then I was there. <laughs> oh, wow. I actually That's saw a bullfight in 2000 in, in that. Yeah. Oh. Wow, that is awesome. I'll put the picture up in a minute. Uh, and now we have Uluru. Australia. Uluru. Yeah, we're supposed to be writing, ladies. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yes, you're quite right with Australia. We have Machu Picchu. We have Machu Picchu. Did I pronounce it correctly? And lastly, we have the Angkor Wat. We have the Angkor Wat. Right, as Wendy stated, this is the biggest bull ring in Spain. It's in Madrid. And it is a magnificent building built many, many years ago. Uh, Uluru is also known as Ayers Rock, and it is a sacred rock in the Northern Territory in Australia. Can you say that again? Is it's called Uluru? What was the other name? The uh, Ayers Rock. Oh, so you can use either name. Yeah, it has was always called Ayers Rock. It's been changed to, uh, to Ul Uluru. Oh. Um, a lot of things are now being given their traditional names because this is a very traditional and spiritual site um, okay. belonging to the original Aborigines from the country. And so this is an Aboriginal name now that it is called by. Um, oh. But before we always knew it as Ayers Rock. Right. Who has Machu Picchu? Peru. Peru. Peru, mm -hmm. indeed. Yes, Peru has it. A very beautiful building. Uh, it was. It's an Inca citadel that was built in the 15th century and then abandoned. I'm not quite sure why I haven't been able to find out the reason for that. But it was abandoned and it sits there as a very beautiful um place to go and visit and who has Angkor Wat it's Thailand I think no close by Cambodia Cambodia, Cambodia. yes Cambodia mm. Cambodia has it it's the largest religious structure in the world and it was built in the 12th century mm. oh. so quite an amazing piece of of um building a uh, building feat in those years i mean we're in the 12th century they didn't have any of our modern things that we've got today for building with right now ready to write ladies we have the bagpipes we have the bagpipes and if you hear them being played by an amateur they are the most horrific sound to hear in the world if you hear them played by somebody who knows how to play them they are really beautiful but when people are learning it's like the violin it is a really difficult sound to listen to right we play the didgeridoo here <laughs> we play the didgeridoo here. Didgeridoo. 
And then the last one in this particular section, we play an instrument called a sitar. Right. Now, <laughs> uh, we play the, oh, I forgot to ask you. I'm going back. Sorry, ladies. Mm -hmm. We Thank finished you. our first sec in our first second 20, uh, number 20. So how did you do in that second group of 10? How did you do in the second group of 10? Okay, I'm still at six. That's good. Six is great, Marjorie. You've, I got, you no, I got oh, five. You got, you got five. That's great. But before you, <laughs> you got less, so you're definitely no, on the up and no. up. I got five last time. Oh, okay. And uh, Wendy, how many did you get? Oh, I, I got seven. So, um, yeah, I missed. Um, but that's okay. I like learning. <laughs> I, oh, I good. didn't know that Ayers Rock had changed names. So. That was right. really interesting. Excellent. So no, that the idea is to to have a few curve balls in there so that if there's oh, yeah. something for everybody to learn along the way. So mm -hmm. it's it's lovely to to be able to learn. Karen, how many did you get? I had seven. Seven and Carol Sue? Five. Five and Carolyn. Six. Six. That's oh, the first yes. one to say yes, six. Yes, right. You did. Sorry, Carolyn. I mm -hmm. forgot that you said you'd got <laughs> six. Apologies there. Apologies. All right. Now, we're doing great on this. So let's continue. Now, uh, before we go. So who have the bagpipes? Scotland. Scotland, yeah. Scotland, usually. But there's another country uh, that also has them. What? Yeah. Uh, no, it's a Ireland. It's a, Ireland. Ireland. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. Look, we we mainly we talk about Scotland, but in fact, the bagpipes. There are two sets of historians that have different ideas. One lot of historians believe it actually came from Egypt, and was brought there by the invaders, while others believe that it originated in Ireland and was brought to Scotland. And Scotland then took it on very big time. Um, and, and so, in fact, it started in Ireland, but is far more popular in Scotland than Ireland now. When I lived Back in Italy, um, they had bagpipes that uh, played at Christmas time. And I think the bagpipers came from Scotland. Uh, not Scotland. Sorry, Sicily. Sicily, yes. Look, they they do come from from different places um, because bagpipes have certainly. I mean, when we um, we have a there's that beautiful Edinburgh tattoo that they have, uh, which is magnificent. Then South Africa had a tattoo um, where people from Scotland came, but also a, there's a very large contingent of people in South Africa who play the bagpipes. And there are, were often bagpipe competitions and things like that. And it was really amazing to go and see them all in their different kilts because every clan has a different kilt and every clan, uh, all the clans played against each other to see who could win um, the bagpipe competitions. And really the, the, bagpiping was amazing what they played with those bagpipes it was incredible I I really enjoyed listening to that but not uh, we had a little boy down the road who was learning to pay the bagpipes at four o'clock every afternoon and everybody stuffed their ears and he was like five blocks from my home we all still stuffed our ears with cotton wool because Oh, the sound was terrible. When he eventually got it and then played at four o'clock, everybody listened. They took out the, the earthings and thoroughly enjoyed the little concert he put on at four o'clock every afternoon as he practiced. But at the beginning, it was not the best. All right. Who plays the didgeridoo? It's Australia. It's Australia. Australia. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So... We've got our bagpipe, where's my bagpipes gone to? And of course the bagpipes are a reed instrument and the air is funded from the, the, the air that is put into the bag. And then as you, they press the bag with their elbows, so the air comes through the reeds and it depends on where their fingers are on those reeds as to what sound is emitted. 
The didgeridoo is a very traditional Australian. Um, it comes from, from our Arab, Aborigines. And uh, it is made by blowing air through the, the, the big tube, which is, uh, and then it depends on the vibration of the lips. They vibrate their lips and they do a special kind of breathing called circular breathing. And they actually learn how to do that breathing before they do this, because it depends entirely on the amount of air going through all the time. So they've got to continue to breathe the whole time because you can't play and then and then play and then. So they have a circular way of breathing so that this can continue to play for five minutes. You can hear this beautiful sort of deep sound that comes out of the didgeridoo and it's how they vibrate the lips that changes the sound of the didgeridoo and who plays an instrument called a star India. 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 India, it is, yes. India. It's a plucked instrument, you don't strum it, you pluck it, you pluck the, the sitar um, and it comes from the 16th century, so it's been played for many, many years uh, through through the different generations, the sitar. Right. Harry, have you got anything you could add to that? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it, but I don't know much about it, yeah. So you can't play it? Uh, I can't play it, yeah. I <laughs> I have a guitar, I have other instruments, but I don't know about this one. Yeah. This is a classical oh. instrument, so you have to yes. take a formal education yeah. for this one. So. Yeah. Like the guru. Yeah. Okay. Back okay. in the 60s, George Harrison of the Beatles learned how to play the sitar. Yes. Right. It was incorporated into Beatles music like around 65, 66. He actually oh, wow. studied with, um, I think it was Ravi Shankar, who was a yes. virtuoso a master. Um, so, um, and other um, musicians as well. I think one of the Rolling Stones, uh, Brian Jones also uh, learned how to play it. I mean, obviously they couldn't play it as well as Ravi, but um, you know, hey, they gave it their best shot. And they like, gave it a go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It doesn't look an easy instrument to play at all. It really looks uh, quite a difficult instrument to play. Right, now, number 24. This country is famous for having the Beatles. And we have the famous singer Tom Jones. He's still very, very active as well surprisingly enough at his age and the last one we have a famous singer Olivia Newton-John right where do the Beatles come from England England, England. yes they come from England from Liverpool in England Liverpool. Uh -huh. And they were very, very popular in the 19th. They started their first gigs were in 1960. And in fact, the first record company that they went to, which was a very well-known record company, turned them down, said there was no market for their kind of music. And when they became famous, that particular um, group must have felt really bad. Uh, they turned down the most popular band in the world uh, over the years. Um, and they had told him that, no, sorry, there's, there's no place for you. It, it's not going to be popular. We won't um, sign you up and we won't um, do any records for you. So... Uh, who has the famous singer Tom Jones? Wales. Wales, yes. He's got that beautiful 
baritone voice that he sings, the green, green grass of home and mm -hmm. many others. I just have to ask my husband. He loves Tom Jones. Oh, yeah. What's new Pussycat? What's new Pussycat? Yes, is another <laughs> one of his favorites. And uh, oh, my husband's gone now. He was walking past. Delilah. 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 Delilah's Delilah his favorite. He mm -hmm. loves Delilah. You know, yeah. back in the 60s or maybe it was late 60s, uh, early 70s, he had a television show here in the States and okay. he used to speak Welsh, not throughout the whole show, but uh, you know, or maybe in the beginning. And, and I just thought it was fascinating because I mean, I had never heard Welsh before. And um, um, anyway, that was just, I don't know if anybody watched that show way back when, but it was, he was great. You know, he had great guests and, you know, he was so, uh, such a great entertainer. My first husband uh, belonged to the the Welsh male voice choir in um, South Africa, and a number of their songs were sung in Welsh, and it's absolutely beautiful. It really is. And um, we have a famous singer. Uh, oh, hang on. Where's poor old Tom? There he is. And now he's he's very popular on the Voice Voice um, UK. You know that the. the program where you listen to the singers and you don't see them and then you choose them on the quality of their voice rather than on, on what they look like um, mm -hmm. and he's on that and usually at least once during the show he will sing or uh, he and one of the other judges because all the judges are singers and they'll sing something or somebody will do something and he'll just get up and just start singing and it's beautiful to watch it really is he's aged very well indeed and um, we have the famous singer Olivia Newton-John. Australia. Australia. Hmm. She was actually born in England, but she moved to Australia when she was six. So she was really known as, as being part of Australia. And can you remember some of the movies or the songs that she sang? Oh, from Greece? Yes, she was in Greece. Xanadu. Xanadu was her big one yeah Xanadu was was her big one and she had a scare um of cancer at one stage but she's still mm -hmm. she's okay and now she's she's going going strong again uh but she was really what one of the most beautiful girls she was so naturally beautiful that uh it just it was amazing I I remember her in Greece particularly she was was amazing uh now <laughs> We love to eat haggis. We love to eat haggis. And I'll, I'll, at the end, I'll tell you one I was going to put in, but I, 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 and see if you can get it. It'll be the bonus point. <laughs> the next one. We love football, meat pies, and Holden cars. Yeah. Yeah. And, and particularly in that country, it's called footy. Everybody plays footy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 20. We love to eat Sorry. enchiladas, yeah, tacos, talk. and lots of chili. Mm. And the last mm. one. Yeah. We love to eat borscht. Mm. We like to eat borscht. And then there's a, a bonus question. We eat mapami worms. Oh, no. <laughs> we eat mapami worms. Mapami worms. Mm, that's the bonus one. <laughs> we eat mapami worms. We'll see if, if we can get that <laughs> just as a bit of fun. Right. We eat haggis. Oh, Scotland. Scotland, do you know what haggis mm -hmm. is? I'm gonna meet yes. The, the meat thing. <laughs> yes, it's made from sheep's heart, sheep's oh. lungs, sheep's livers, and it's cooked in the sheep's stomach. 
Ooh. And it's not my favorite. I have eaten it, but it's not yeah. my favorite. <laughs> I have a taste of it. It was okay, but it's not something I would uh, no. would it really want to eat. I just wanted no. to try it. Yeah. <laughs> the whiskey yeah. didn't help either. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you mean you can it? Is it it's gamey? No, it's Is not. It's, 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 it tastes like awful. If, if, if anybody so eats awful. Okay. then it's it's very like awful <laughs> not, not my favorite i can't even For, stand gamey things okay so uh, we love football meat pies and holding cars england nope no nope. nope not japan nope <sighs> could it be germany no, yeah. no, no. Wait a minute. What it's you... actually the icon for two different countries that are very close together, but this, this, this is the iconic meal for this country. I have a friend who lives in Australia. She calls it footy. Ah, well, you're right. It's Australia. Oh. Meat, yes, it's Australia. Meat Australia? pies. Meat yeah, pie? meat pie. The meat pie is the icon for Australia and New Zealand, believe it or not. And they do make the most delicious meat, uh, meat pies. We've got a little bakery down the road and their meat pies are to die for. Uh, once a week, we will go and have a treat of one of their meat pies because they really are so, so tasty. Are they spicy? Um, no, no. They, well, there they are different ones. You can get some spicy ones. My favorite one is um, beef and uh, cheese and bacon, beef, cheese and bacon. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite one. Um, I really do enjoy that one. So if I can get that, that's my favorite. Right. Now, so so yes. is, a, is a Holden car a brand of a car? Yes, it, it like is. A no, it's like a Volvo or a BMW. It's the Holden is a brand oh. of a car. Okay. So, I don't know whether they, they are still around. They have been kind of phased out over the last, they were still around when I moved here, but the Holden companies were looking to close, but Holden was the, the car of Australia. Is it a, a four-door car or a family car? Or is it so it's a four-door car. car. Order. It's a four-door car. Um, when we go from uh, uh, sharing, I will go and find quickly a picture of it and share it. Um, unless uh, uh, Harry can find one for me in the meantime. We love to eat enchiladas, tacos, and lots of chili. <laughs> California. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico. Mexico, Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's so Mexico. California, yeah, but California also <laughs> like it, do they? Oh, Is well, it? yeah, because we were, you know, we were part of Mexico, you know. All right. So. so, but yeah, it's very popular here. But I was just saying that to be funny. <laughs> yeah, no, it's lovely. That's it. and, and, and of course, an enchilada is your tortilla rolled it with a filling and then a savory gravy over it, which looks really, but I think it must be pretty spicy. Am I right? It can be, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, usually you can get the sauce on the side, you know, that way you can, you know, uh, add however <laughs> you want it. But it, it's usually pretty mild unless, unless it, it just depends on the restaurant and whether you can add the sauce yourself. You know. Oh, sorry, Zab, ladies, I've just realized I forgot to pull the blind down before the class because the dogs are lying in the sun because it's cold today and they were lying in their basket in the sun and I was going to pull the blind down so that it's a bit darker in here, but they are loving their sun, so I, I didn't pull it down. I forgot, actually. <laughs> right, the last one without the bonus, we love to eat borscht. What is that? Worsha. Worsha. Mm -mm. Germany, nope. Russia, R Russia. Yes, sorry, Russia. Oh, Russia. Said Russia. Yes, sorry, I was asleep. Russia. Yes, it's made with beetroot, mainly beetroot, but you also they put in some meat and and bone broth and sauté vegetables will also be can be put into it. But the 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 base of it is beetroot, the beet plant. Mm -hmm. 
and cabbage and then you, that's the sour cream on top mm -hmm. i'm yep. part russian and so i i made it you know? oh you've made it excellent what does it taste like wendy oh my god i love it oh and i forgot to say you see the green um um uh, herb on it that's dill mm -hmm. That's dill. Dill. Fresh oh, dill. Yeah. Fresh um, dill. It's, I love it. It's very hearty. Uh, it's not really spicy, but it, uh, the dill really makes it. And of course, the sour cream. <laughs> yeah, so, of course. Um, sour cream I mean, it's, a, it's it. a great soup. It's usually served <laughs> hot, but some people will serve it cold, but I like it hot. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, I, it's one of my favorite soups. It, it, um, it's a lot of work, it's but um and you know a lot of people will have it um when it's cold you know it's a nice hearty soup to have in winter you know mm -hmm. very nourishing it's peasant food <laughs> yeah that's okay i love soup and it's oh yeah i don't mean I'll, that definitely, it... I'll definitely have a look at it and see you see the the what it's like um well, it's not uh, negative I, to say that, but it's you no, know, it's of really course what not. The people, the, the, yeah, the people everybody the likes age. it. Means yeah. everybody likes it. It's something that is is uh, happily received by everyone. And if you come to San Francisco, we have some Russian restaurants. In fact, there's one in several of my neighborhood. You can buy it either there at the restaurant or to go. Okay, that's a thought to look at as well. Right now, our bonus question. We eat mapami worms. Australia. Japan. No. no. <laughs> South Africa. Africa. Oh. Africa. The, Af the African people really enjoy eating mapami worms. They, they grill them over the open fire and they eat them. They, they're very tasty, apparently. Um, <laughs> I've looked at them and gone, I don't think. I was offered them and I said, you know, they really look so tasty, but I'm not hungry at the moment. <laughs> I just couldn't imagine putting Are they big? <laughs> Yeah, they're about that long. Oh my goodness! Oh. Long fat worms, oh. 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 and they striped. They striped long fat worms. Oh. <laughs> They are interesting. What what I'll do is I will put into the um, the notes the Holden car and the Mapami worms for you to see. I will add it as a a, a little note at the end, uh, so that you can see them because they are really interesting to see. Yeah. All right, ladies, let's see how did you do. Everybody's counting up. Did better. Did better. What did you get, well, Marjorie? I got, I, had, I got six. Fantastic. That's up from five. <laughs> oh, exactly. Oh, but as long as you had fun, that's the whole thing. Oh, yeah. It's the having fun that's the part of it yeah. that makes it interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, everybody else is doing their adding. Carolyn, what did you do? I'm going backwards. I got five. You got five. And Carol yeah. Sue, how many did you get? Um, I did better this time. Seven. Seven. Hey. Very nice. And Wendy, how did you do? Um, well, I missed two, so I think I got eight. I missed the um the Australian Holden and the um well Actually, uh, well, yeah, and the meat and the worms. I didn't get that. No, one. well, then you got nine. Oh, okay. The worms so were a bonus. Okay. <laughs> the worms oh. were a bonus. And Carol, uh, Karen, how did you do? I think I got eight. Very good indeed. Uh, well, do you see everybody? I hope you had fun. That was the whole idea yeah. is that you had a lot of fun uh, and learned some different bits and pieces. Next week is the 70s quiz. So how many of you remember the 70s? So Nick, <laughs> oh, well, Wendy, you got to come back for the 70s quiz. Uh, same time next week. My quizzes are always on a Thursday. And um, so we, we will be having the 70s quiz next week. Do you mean Thursday your time? And oh, Wednesday, yes, yeah, Wednesday time? your Wednesday, your time, Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wednesday, my time, yeah. Thursday. Yeah, time. Wednesday, your time. Same time next week. You're down under, so you're ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm already halfway through the next day. It's already half yeah. midday. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, 
Thank you. All right. All right. So, oh, no, it's a pleasure, everyone. Thanks so much for being in class, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, I hope to see you in some of the other ones that we've got. You'll get your notes and, of course, the feedback. And if you want to invite a friend, how to invite your friends too. So, well, thank you. And if you thank want a copy, too. enjoy. Lovely. Thank you so much for being in class. Thank you, Harry. I won't ask you how many you got. <laughs> yeah just a thumbs up <laughs> but yeah thank i really you. enjoyed it too uh, right thank you so thank very you. much have a great bye. evening bye, bye.